Hello everyone and welcome back to the channel and in today's video we will be discussing a very important service and uh, which is one of the most important ones when we consider the performance of our applications. Yes, you are right. We are going to talk about AWS Global Accelerators. So if you are ready, let's begin. So the thing about AWS Global Accelerators is that, um, no, wait. Let's check out the problem at hand first and then we will talk about AWS Global Accelerators. So let's understand the problem. And I'll explain the problem first and then you can think about why the solution I am going to give or I'm going to provide is justified. So let's suppose you are an avid user of a service that is hosted on AWS. And what happens here is when uh, we talk about the AWS regions where your service is hosted, that is basically a part of a global infrastructure or a global network infrastructure. So you have to just imagine now on a world map that uh, you have several endpoints connected to each other, which forms the AWS global infrastructure. Okay, so here, whenever you wish to access the service, you will connect to that URL that you have from a public access point from here and from your home or office or any place that you like using your internet service provider and you will send a request to the endpoint that is hosting your service okay that may be here but it's not like a national highway that uh, you will move straight and you will get connected to this one so to reach the destination every request has to traverse through a network path that is optimized enough to take the route based on network availability or host availability and the routing policies that we have. So when you hit the URL, it first reaches to network A and then it moves to network B and then to network C and then to the server that serves content to you. The most important thing to see here is what if you are the application developer or the team which is currently serving the request and has hosted the application. The user here has to pass through a set of networks to reach the destination where every traversal actually results in latency. If you see the timelines here, every traversal increases latency and can affect the performance of the users. And as we know, latency is the time taken for the packets to travel from one node to another. Every node or every additional node will affect performance. And this might be a huge problem if users are experiencing low latencies like gaming. People who are gaming, that is like online gaming, people play a lot of online games like PUBG or CSGO and many others. And those users will not like lag and latencies. So latency and performance is the problem here. If you stay far from the region that is currently serving the content, then it's a possibility that you or your users will be affected by this. So this becomes a very big problem. So let's talk about the solution at hand or let's check the solution. So the solution here is AWS Global Accelerators and I'll tell you how and you might have a lot of questions during this session but in the end your doubts will be cleared so watch the video till the end. And before this I would humbly request you to watch the CloudFront sessions that we had so that you can understand the terms that I'll be using here very clearly. So AWS Global Accelerator is a service that improves the availability and performance of your applications with the local or global users. Wait, I know it's a bit confusing, but let's see what happens when you use AWS Global Accelerators. So what happens when you use AWS Global Accelerators? Unlike the problematic situation or scenario that we saw before, the request here is directly served at the Global Accelerators and it straight away communicates with the AWS endpoint which serves the content. And this actually reduces latency by up to 60%. And that's a huge benefit of using global accelerators. Okay, so this is the global accelerator. So you might be thinking, how is it possible that it can directly talk to a single point of access that is the global accelerator and is able to communicate with the server to give you the content you want? You have a valid question. So let's keep this thought in our mind and let's move on. So let's imagine you're staying at your home and you got a call for an interview and you have a rough idea about the route to the destination that we have here but you don't know the exact location before you start. So what you do is you decide I'll stop at every nearest traffic post and I'll ask the person there to tell me where should I go next. So you start from your home and uh, you travel two kilometers and reach the traffic post one. And then you ask someone there 
and they tell you that you can go towards traffic too and ask someone there and they will help you so you travel for three kilometers and you reach a traffic two and then similarly you travel for two more kilometers and you reach traffic post three and then again two kilometers to traffic post four and ultimately after two kilometers you reach your destination okay so that counts to a total of 11 kilometers so like two three is yes, five seven nine eleven okay so total of 11 kilometers so what happened here is that to reach the destination you had four pit stops so traffic post one traffic post two traffic post three and traffic post four so which adds a lot of time for you to reach the destination and then you come back from there to your home and you had to take the same or a different path but overall it will be a time consuming affair okay so in retrospect you realized that you already knew the traffic force location and if you had the idea of that location before uh, you might have reached that location way faster than what you had to travel for so i hope you're getting the correlation to this with the network routing path that i was talking about so what you do is that the next time you started traveling to the location you straight away went to the traffic post okay this traffic post and then straight to the destination that you want and it took you about seven kilometers so three kilometers going straight to the traffic post and then four kilometers to the destination a total of seven kilometers rather than 11 kilometers like what you had to travel before so i hope you understand that the point to point travel that we can also call as a node to node jump or we call them as hops so these hops adds up more time for your request to be sent and the response to be received which ultimately in scenario one is more than scenario two uh, basically as you can see it took about 11 kilometers for in the scenario one for us to reach the destination and seven kilometers in the destination two or the scenario two and this is what global accelerators help us to achieve the scenario two so i hope you got the idea of what we are dealing with let's move on so coming back to aws global accelerators so it is a service remember that it is a service that improves the availability and performance of the applications you serve with local or global users so it improves performance with the users who is in your region and with the users who stay at other geographic locations as well so here what it does is that it provides static ip addresses that acts as a fixed entry point to your application endpoints in a single or multiple availability zones or aws regions such as your application load balancer or network load balancer or Amazon EC2 instances. The static IP addresses uh, for the common understanding is a type of IP which is configured by the user and manually attached to the resource. Unlike the ones we automatically associate it with uh, what happens with the dynamic IPs. So here AWS Global Accelerator provisions two static IP addresses for it so that you can configure one or more listeners to process inbound connections from end clients to the global accelerators. So by using these listeners, AWS Global Accelerator uses the AWS uh, Global Network to optimize the path from our users to the application and thus improving the performance of the resultant traffic as much as 60%. So that's a huge improvement. And uh, there is a site also that uh, actually provides your speed comparison test as well. I have given it here. You can also check that out. So this site actually provides you a speed comparison test and uh, you can actually go there and test how much time it takes for a file to be downloaded from the place that you are right now to be downloaded from the region that you choose okay so that is uh, the comparison between the speed that you get with and without the global accelerator okay so here if you see uh, me sitting in india when trying to download the file that is in us east one north virginia so it is about 35 percent faster with aws global accelerators than the direct connection using the public internet and moving on if there are multiple endpoints that you have attached to the global accelerator it continuously monitors the health of your application endpoints and redirects traffic to healthy endpoints in less than 30 seconds so this is one less thing to worry about it's fast and reliable as well so here i'm talking about the feature set and all these things would behave differently based on the scenario at hand okay so i hope it was clear let's move on so let's talk about some benefits of global accelerators so improve global application availability so aws global accelerators continuously monitor the health of your application endpoints and redirects traffic to healthy endpoints in less than 30 seconds i hope this 
one I have already discussed before. So the next one is to accelerate your global applications. So here we need to understand this very carefully that global accelerators optimize the network path with the help of the huge AWS global network. So no matter where your users are located, AWS global accelerators intelligently route traffic to that particular endpoint that provides the best application performance. So it's like if it is reachable and stable, then it will connect to then it will connect you to that. Okay, it should be close enough or the proximity should be close enough and then it will connect to that and it should be stable as well and easily manage endpoints. So as this works with static IP addresses, it makes it it makes it easier to switch uh, availability zones or regions without any impact to the client facing applications. And here AWS tells us uh, that we can use static IP addresses from the Amazon IP address pool or we can have our own IP address ranges that is also termed as BYOIP bring your own IP and you can use it to create your own application or own IP address pool from which you can use an IP to be associated with the global accelerator and as I already told you that it's one of the best services to accelerate the performance of latency sensitive applications so what it does is that it routes the traffic to the closest edge location via anycast remember this term anycast okay so then by routing it to the closest regional endpoint over the aws global network so you might feel uh, why edge location here because it's not cloud front we are talking about aws global accelerators right so here global accelerator uses it as a proxy for packet transfer for tcp and udp protocols so here if you can see when you make a request it routes it to the nearest edge location then Global Accelerator checks the distance, health and endpoint weight and based on which it routes the traffic to the suitable endpoint group and post which based on the policies that you have it will choose to send the request to the endpoint. Okay, so these are the endpoints and these endpoints can be basically your network load balancer or application load balancer or EC2 instances and you must know that there can be multiple endpoints in an endpoint group so there can be multiple endpoints for an example i'm showing you one but there can be multiple endpoints as well and all this is just to ensure that the user have the lowest latencies okay so i hope it was clear let's move on so i told you before that aws global accelerators actually route the traffic to the closest edge location via anycast and then by routing it to the closest regional endpoint over the AWS global network. As we are moving forward towards learning how the actual architecture is for AWS global accelerators, you must understand this difference between Anycast and Unicast very carefully. So I'm sure everyone is aware of network addressing and routing methodologies. And some of them are like broadcast or multicast or unicast or anycast. So listen to this very carefully. So a unicast address is a type of network communication or what we call as network addressing and routing methodology where you have a single unique IP attached to an endpoint and we make a one on one communication with that. So we can term that as a single IP communication in the location. For example, you want to download a file from an FTP server. Okay. And it will be quite impractical to have two FTP server endpoints with the same IP. So the unicast is a single IP communication in the group of endpoints. So if you understand the concept here and think about it, if the server is very far from the user, let's suppose this server is very far from the user, it will be a bit slower to access. And as it is a single IP communication, it is prone to vulnerabilities and distributed denial of service attacks because it will be a single point of contact. Whereas coming to any cast, you can have multiple servers in multiple locations with the same IPs. And here, as you can see, we have multiple endpoints with the same IP. And uh, this is very useful because the algorithm will choose the one that is closest to you so that you can deliver the traffic to that particular endpoint. And thus improving the latency and performance and as well as the reliability because it's less prone to have a DDoS attack and the failover will be seamless. So you might feel, wow, Anycast is better, isn't it? And it has all the good features. And if I ask you uh, which one we should use, you might say, yeah, we will use this. I'll use Anycast rather than Unicast. But the only pain that we have with Anycast is a huge cost of infrastructure 
but you don't have to worry about this because AWS does it for you. And in any case, if you use the service, you have to pay for it. The same goes with AWS. Okay, so I hope it was clear. Let's move on. So now we have reached a point where we are actually going to see how we actually are going to create it. But the demo will be in the next episode. So don't miss out on that. The global accelerator actually is not free. So if you don't want to do that on your own, then you can just watch the video to learn it. I will take the pain for you. So your friend here is going to take this one for the team. So this is very important and you should listen to this very carefully. So before creating the global accelerators or what we call our accelerator. So when you think of it, uh, it's got a very apt name, isn't it? Because it helps us to accelerate our performance for the applications we deploy and as well as the performance for our users. So as the first point that I've already referred before, it can be used with EC2 instances, load balancers like ALB or NLBs. And if you think it works only with public subnets, then don't worry, it will work with private subnets as well. And that we will learn when we cover VPC. Okay, so here for the example, we will be creating an EC2 instance in the region US East 1 that is in North Virginia and we'll create one more EC2 instance in AP South 1 that is our Mumbai location, Apna Mumbai. So now we have two EC2 instances and let us imagine that we have hosted our applications on these instances. So if we serve these instances as it is, you may know that somewhere in the timeline, the users might face lag or performance issues based on the load. So what we'll do is, we will create our global accelerator here. Okay, that is named as my accelerator. And the first thing you would do is to create a listener. So the listener will tell you which protocol are we going to listen to. And this we can have TCP or HTTP. So to complete the creation of your global accelerators, you need two endpoint groups. One is for US East 1 and one will be for AP South 1. So with which we will attach our instances that we have to our endpoint groups. So these instances will act as an endpoint for our endpoint group. So for us, US East 1 endpoint group, we will attach the EC2 instance at US East 1. And for our AP South 1 endpoint group, we'll attach the EC2 Mumbai instance. Okay, as an endpoint. So that's it. Now we can just go ahead and create the AWS Global Accelerator. And once we have successfully created it, we will get our two static Anycast IPs. Okay, these two to access our endpoints globally and which is used for high availability and fault tolerance and that's how our users will be able to access our application and we will get the dns as well of global accelerator so for example i have written abc.awsglobalaccelerator.com so the most fun part is that if the user is from usa or near to usa region that user will be redirected to the closest one that is our us east one okay so if the user is close to USA region, it will be redirected to the endpoint group that is closest to or it is closer to USA East 1. So that user will be redirected to the closest one and the closest one is obviously US East 1 location or the endpoint group. So the user will be redirected to this particular endpoint group. And if suppose the user is from India or nearby AP South 1 region, it will be redirected towards the endpoint group which is closest to in India or the locations that are near to this particular endpoint group. So that will be a comparative approach uh, to this as which instance is closer to the user and they will be redirected to that instance. So you might ask like what happens if this user that is trying to access from India and the endpoint group that is present in India is not responding. So what happens if the health check actually fails uh, based on the configuration that you set for the health checks in AWS Global Accelerators, it will be redirected to the other region that we have that is the US East one. So you might ask like, yeah, it's the same thing, right? Again, after a few minutes, then it will start facing lags. So don't worry about that. It takes a very less time for it to recover. So you don't have to worry about this. So it will just take a few amount of time and then it will redirect traffic to the desired endpoint that you have. That is basically your EC2 Mumbai. So now let's recap this. When you use your AWS Global Accelerator URL, uh, you route through the edge location and then based on the policy that is configured on AWS Global Accelerator, your request will be forwarded to the desired endpoint group and then to the endpoint. Okay, so I hope this was clear. Let's move on. So let's talk about some important benefits of using global accelerators. So the first point that we have here is we have an instant regional failover and AWS Global Accelerator automatically checks the health of your applications and routes user traffic to only to the healthy endpoints or the healthy application endpoints. 
So the second point that we have is high availability. So as we already discussed before, when you create an accelerator, you allocate two IPv4 static IP addresses that are serviced by independent network zones. When we say static IP allocation, these network zones that we have are isolated units with their own physical infrastructure from which they serve the IP from its unique IP subnet. So when there is a failure, the URL will be redirected to the healthy one. So the third point is that there is no variability around clients that uh, cache IP addresses. So sometimes what happens is that clients and internet resolvers cache DNS answers for a long period of time. Here, if there is an issue with the server or if there is a configuration change, then you don't have to worry about the downtime. The changes get updated very fast because when using a AWS Global Accelerator, client doesn't need to cache DNS. The fourth one that we have is improves performance. As I have already said this before, when you use a AWS Global Accelerator URL and your request routes through the edge location, then based on the policy that is configured on Global Accelerator, your request will be forwarded to the desired endpoint group and then to the endpoint. So the fifth point is that it is easy to manage as a GA uses static IPs. So even if you switch between availability zones or regions, you don't have to change or update DNS and which is very useful when you want to test your applications or, or simulate failovers. The sixth one is that there are very good flexibility points in GA or global accelerators that it allows you to direct a fixed or variable amount of traffic to an endpoint group so, or if you wish to redirect traffic to a single endpoint group uh, also you can do that which is very useful when you want to do performance testing. So most of you might be thinking that this service seems to be quite similar to CloudFront and you will be commenting that what is the difference between CloudFront and Global Accelerators? Wait, 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 one moment. That's what we'll be talking about now. So you should understand one thing uh, that is very clear that Global Accelerators and CloudFront are individual services which have specific usage. Okay. And both of these services use edge locations and AWS Global Network to serve content. An edge location I hope you remember from our previous discussions on AWS CloudFront, an edge location is a location, not a service. We don't create edge locations using AWS console. We create service such as CloudFront and AWS Global Accelerator, which makes use of these edge locations. Okay, so I hope this is clear now. And both of these services can be integrated with AWS Shield for protection against DDoS attacks. Now coming to the differences. So Global Accelerator improves performance for a wide range of application over TCP or UDP protocols by proxying packets at the edge locations. By proxying packets at the edge locations that we have to the applications running in one or more AWS regions. This point I guess we have discussed around 10 times already. But on the other hand, CloudFront is also a CDN, is basically a CDN which is used for caching or for cacheable contents like images or video files or some dynamic content. And it's mostly used to reduce latency by bringing content closer to the user. Okay, so we in Global Accelerator, we are not bringing any content closer to the user. But in CloudFront, we actually are caching the content near to the user in our edge locations. So the second important thing is that AWS Global Accelerators work seamlessly or works awesomely for both HTTP use cases that specifically require static IP addresses and non-HTTP use cases like gaming that is that is basically which works on UDP and IoT that is Internet of Things which works on MQTT or voice over IPs. But CloudFront mostly is used to handle HTTP requests and uh, the best thing is the ability to cache contents at the edge location which makes it easier for the users to access the content. So this was an overall discussion on what is AWS Global Accelerator and there can be questions as exam like uh, what service can we use to improve the performance of the application which can reduce the latency or which can reduce latency by up to 60%. So you can answer it as AWS Global Accelerator. So this was a very long discussion on a very important topic. Don't worry, the hands-on demo is right on the way and it takes a lot of effort to make these designs and videos so please do like share and comment and most importantly please do subscribe so stay safe stay healthy and i'll meet you in the next one until then it's pytholic signing off